Hey there, everybody. How you doing? I hope you're doing well, and I hope those of you that live in Michigan were out enjoying the beautiful weather on Tuesday when it was 70-some degrees. I was wearing shorts. Of course, when you have legs like mine, you need to wear shorts a lot. So, um, But uh, I enjoyed the warmth, and uh, it brought to mind a story I read uh, Max Lucado shared about... Uh, uh, July 4th one time they were out on the boat and they were uh, driving across the lake and his wife reminded him of the lower water levels and he saw the buoys and he hit the throttle and shot right into a sandbar and got stuck well to try to get unstuck he did what most men would do and that was to keep hitting the throttle, probably trying to rock it back and forth, back and forth to get out. When he finally raised the rudder and he looked at everything, he saw that everything underneath was bent. And after that, they made the long journey back across the lake at a top speed of five miles an hour. And Max said this, they made that trip while it shook like a three-wheeled jalopy. Uh, imagine the embarrassment on that lake being in a nice boat um, and that's you're shaking your way across the lake going five miles an hour with everybody wondering what's wrong with you you ever made a bad decision worse by making another bad decision no no I'm sure none of you have you've 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 learned right off the bat from the first one not to what everyone has and that's why the, the, the old saying, stupid is as stupid does, comes about. Because we make a dumb choice, and then we think that we can fix it, and we typically make another dumb choice. And uh, the reason we do that is because our pride won't let us admit that we made a mistake. Now, I myself am not guilty of this, but I know you watching, you are. And if I were guilty of this then it would be in really dumb situations too. And usually, if you're arguing with your spouse, if you're married, or if you're a child and you're arguing with your parent, because you've been cooped up for way too long with each other, and I encourage you to go out, play golf, I don't know, do something outside, cut the grass, you have argued with them over something dumb. Right? How often do we argue over the big things? In our house, when we don't argue. We have, we have uh, informed and, and intense discussions. But maybe you argue. And how many times is it something dumb? And you end up after however long, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, maybe a whole evening realizing how dumb it was and it's because of our pride and that pride influences our bad choices well as we keep looking at uh, Joseph and Genesis we see that Joseph was offered plenty of opportunities to make bad choices now I am in no way saying that Joseph was perfect I am sure he made mistakes because he was a human but we don't read of him making a bad choice and then making it worse with another bad choice. And maybe because he learned quickly. Remember, he was in the pit and God was in the pit with him. He found, found God down there. Because Satan, if he can't destroy you in the pit, he'll come after you in Potiphar's house. And that's where we are with uh, Joseph and his story. We're looking at his time in Potiphar's house we're just going to look at the initial part of that story today. Um, we'll finish the rest of it next week. Um, but just so you're caught up, remember Joseph was thrown into the pit by his brothers. They ripped his clothes off. They were trying to figure out how they were going to kill him and then convince uh, his dad that it was some accident. And then these traders came along and they were like, ooh, we can sell him into slavery. And so they sold him into slavery. And Joseph ends up in Egypt in Potiphar's house. Remember, Potiphar was the captain of uh, the Pharaoh's guard, so he was basically the head of the secret service for Pharaoh. And this is where we're at with Joseph in Joseph's time. He is in Potiphar's house, and we're in chapter 39 in Genesis, uh, verse, uh, verse 2, starting off. It says, The Lord was with Joseph. He succeeded in everything he did, 
as he served in the home of his Egyptian master. Potiphar noticed this and realized that the Lord was with Joseph, giving him success in everything he did. This pleased Potiphar, so he soon made Joseph his personal attendant. He put him in charge of his entire household and everything he owned. From the day Joseph was put in charge of his master's household and property, the Lord began to bless Potiphar's household for Joseph's sake. All his household affairs ran smoothly, and his crops and livestock flourished. So Potiphar gave Joseph complete administrative responsibility over everything he owned. With Joseph there, he didn't worry about a thing except what kind of food to eat. Joseph did well at everything. He exceeded. He was blessed by God. He, he And it shows in his progress through Potiphar's house, which... Most commentaries believe that this was not uh, an overnight change. It wasn't like Joseph showed up on Monday and by Friday it, it was like the movies, you know, and, and Friday it's like, hey, you can have everything, okay? It didn't work like that. This most likely took years of Joseph establishing himself at different levels in the house, showing um, what a good worker he was, how devoted he was, and that God was blessing him and taking care of him. And so this, this took a while. But we see in this that Joseph had risen, and we see what position he had risen to. I mean, he was second in command of the house of Potiphar. He could hire, he could fire, he could buy, he could sell. And he had done so well that Potiphar was very wealthy from what Joseph had done. From the time that Joseph came in, Potiphar's wealth increased exponentially. We read this also in the story of Jacob with Laban, and that uh, that Jacob continually made Laban more and more wealthy. There's some other stuff in there. Jacob was a bit of a, a dirty scoundrel too. But but the point was that God was blessing Joseph. He was taking care of him in all of this. And, and here's the thing with Joseph. He had it all. I mean, the boys got it. He was smart. He was wise. He was respectful. He was hard worker. Clearly, God was on his side, so much so that the Egyptians could see it, they recognized it, and they wanted to take advantage of it. They wanted him to be in charge because they watched these things happen. And we know he was good looking too. Verse 6, Joseph was a very handsome and well-built young man. He would have been a lot like me. He, 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 he had it all. You know, he was something else. And someone else took notice of Joseph and, and the whole package. In verse 7, we read, Potiphar's wife soon began to look at him lustfully. Come and sleep with me, she demanded. The NIV says, took notice of Joseph. The New King James says, she cast longing eyes on Joseph. She liked what she saw every single day. He was always in the house. And can you just see her? following him like a puppy. I mean, are you able to watch this happen? And she's just constantly after him. And she was throwing the temptation out there repeatedly. Uh, and she saw him so much and she saw him that way so much. She wanted him so much that it completely consumed her. And we read that she repeatedly made this offer. And the New King James, she was making no bones about it. I mean, she was clearly stating... In the New King James, lie with me. NIV, come to bed with me. NLT, come and sleep with me. She was making clear what her intentions were. And it probably was not easy for Joseph. I, I, I'm, I, I'm pretty sure she was, she was a, a pretty good looking lady. Potiphar's position would have given him just about any choice he would have wanted in terms of women in the kingdom. And so we can assume that his wife was a beautiful woman. Um, and she knew she had this. And she knew she had this position. She knew she had this authority. Um, and she was going to use it. And she kept trying to get Joseph. And kept trying and kept trying repeatedly. See, the bait to follow the wrong path is oftentimes very tempting. Uh, Potiphar's wife was probably one of the most difficult temptations that a man has to overcome. And, and Joseph was a temptation for her. And we can tell that she gave in to that temptation. 
And it consumed her every thought. It consumed her every day. It consumed every aspect of her. And the enemy will use attractive means to cause us to fail and to fall. And during a time where we are stuck at home and hopefully wherever you are, it's starting to loosen up for you. Some of those temptations become even greater. I was just listening to a podcast and they were talking about how, especially for men, the struggle with pornography in the midst of this stay at home throughout the country is exploding uh, because your normal days are thrown off, all these things, and you're having more conflict typically with your spouse or significant other because you're around each other nonstop. And so they're seeing this explode during this time. And the enemy uses these attractive means to try to cause us to fail and to fall. And we need to be on the lookout for these struggles to come, especially now. Uh, 1 Peter, Peter says in, in 1 Peter 5, 8, Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He's looking for you to devour. He wants to devour you. If you follow Jesus Christ, he wants to take you down. Because if he takes you down, he can ruin your message of Jesus for others. He's going to use the things that are most attractive to us to attack us. He's going to use even things that can seem good to attack us. So how do we overcome that? I mean, PT, you got to you got to help me out a little bit here. I am I am stuck at home. I do see these things. How do I handle it? Well, it, it it's a pretty simple straightforward thing. Uh, you lean on God and you lean on his word. You you read Matthew chapter 4 and that is when Jesus went out into the wilderness and he was being tempted by Satan and, and and this is a, a great thing to study more deeply in his temptations because in these temptations, we read them as pretty short, you know, straightforward things. He was tempted, you know, three times, whatever. Um, but those temptations encompass all the temptations that man faces throughout his life. And what Jesus did to combat the devil was to use scripture. He used the Bible. And it's interesting because the devil is using the Bible to try to go after Jesus. And Jesus is like, no, that's not, that's not how it is. This is what it says. This is what it says. You got to know the truth. And we are, I, I want to encourage you today. I want you to be encouraged coming out of this to use the word for every part of your life. And, and to use it for every part of your life, you've got to be in it every day. And, and you shouldn't have any trouble. I, I know that this time, I know for me, it's really messed up my daily routines. Um, and I've had to get a new daily routine, which uh, here in the next few weeks is going to change again. But uh, we got to make part of that routine being in his word every day. A couple of weeks ago, I encouraged you to memorize Isaiah 26.3. And, and the purpose of that was for you to be able to walk around having scripture in your head of God's peace in our life during tough times. But we have plenty of time to be in God's word. And so I encourage you, get in it. Get in the word. I, I'm going to finish this. I'm going to wrap this up with, with two challenges, all right? It's extra this time. Two challenges, okay? First one, and this is a challenge I'm working on too for me. When you want to get on Facebook or some other platform, social media, something like that, when that desire arises, I want you to, I challenge you to choose God's word instead. Whether you do that on your Bible app, on your phone, on your tablet, or you get out the good old bound pieces of paper, pick his word instead. Just try it once, just for the next week. Each day that, he, oh, I'm going to go jump on here and just see what's going on. Go, oh, you know what? Instead, I'm going to go read a chapter and pick a book and work your way through it. And so that's challenge number one. When you want to get on Facebook or some other social media platform or something else, check the news, whatever, uh, pick God's word instead. And the second challenge goes with what we did a couple weeks ago. Challenge yourself to start memorizing scripture. This was brought to me a few years ago and I've been working on it sense. But challenge yourself to start memorizing scripture. Why do we need to memorize scripture, PD? I mean, I've always got it on 
my phone. It's with me all the time. I got that that app. I don't know if you got the same Bible app I do. Well, sometimes the app doesn't always work. And when the tough time or the temptations come, the Holy Spirit can use what's in your mind and in your heart to help you. And so if you've been putting God's word in your mind and in your heart, then the Holy Spirit has resources to use. And we want to give him those resources to use. And he will bring those to mind. And here's the encouragement. When those challenges come and you've got those resources there, he will help you have victory over the te those temptations. I'm not saying you're going to be perfect. The process of sanctification takes your entire life. But he can help you more and more and more be victorious. So that you don't become sinless, but you sin less. You got that? That's the sanctification. That's our growth. And a big part of that is having God's word in us. That's him speaking to us and he will bring those to mind. And so that's your second challenge. Start memorizing scripture. Uh, and I don't care where you start. You know, Maybe you start working on memorizing a book. An entire book of the Bible and just pick one. I, I would pick, uh, oh, maybe John, maybe, maybe Luke. In Acts, you put the two together and just work your way through. It's kind of the story of, of Jesus' ministry along with um, the history of the early church. You could try that. Um, and, and I, you know, you, you pick. You can start in the Old Testament. There's some memorizing apps, too, that can help you. But start memorizing Scripture. So two challenges. Choose God's Word over Facebook or news or something else uh, at least once every day. And then start memorizing scripture. Okay, you do those. And I think you're going to see your days get a little bit easier um, to, to get through and work through. And that God will start to work on your heart uh, to make you more like him uh, each and every day. And so I encourage you to do those things. And I want you to be encouraged. And so I just want to wrap up with this. My usual saying. Be blessed and be a blessing. God loves you.